Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the opportunity we have to pack the house. Father, we just thank you for those that are coming. We don't exactly know who you're going to bring with you today, but we know that these white people are going to be here to hear Pastor's message, and then hopefully also that I can bring your word into a manner that's worthy and honoring of you, Father. Please let me not change anything from the Bible, but use it only as for your glorification. And thank you again for this chance today to be together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I'm dressed as a referee. You know, somebody has to be on the referee side. <laughs> so if, if you get a little out of line, I can, I can make sure we're going to Okay, I want to start off and just share with you. And I walk around, Pastor, so I don't know That's okay. how good you'll get me. But I just want to see, what do you notice in this picture up there? Milk. <laughs> Besides the price. Varieties. <laughs> Next, next one, Robert. It's besides the price. Yeah. Now. Okay. Same product, different cartons. So you've got probably all you know when you go shopping. You you have whole milk. You got two percent. You got one yeah. percent. You got fat free. You got a half gallon, whole gallon, chocolate, lactose free, etc., etc. Uh -huh. Are we not blessed as a nation? Yeah. Exactly. You know, there was a, a movie called uh, Into the Sphere, and I can remember at the very end, it was about a missionary, and he went down, and <clears throat> unfortunately he lost his life, but the family yeah. got really close to one of the tribal members. Yeah. And he, for the first time, went into a shopping uh, grocery store. And the lady proceeded to give the, the debit card at that time, and they gave her, she swiped it, and then they gave the debit card back and said, what a great country. You give them the money, they give it right back to you, and you get your food. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, But what he was amazed with, and I have to say that my own wife, when she first came here to go grocery shopping, now Korea is very uh, modern and it has all the amenities, so it's not a third world nation, but she still was a little bit overwhelmed, particularly when you go into one of these super targets or yeah. something yeah. of that nature. Yeah. You can see how we are blessed as a country. <laughs> well, we got more than one choice of milk. Yeah. Amen. Next one. <laughs> Next slide, please. <laughs> While he's doing that, I can see that. What do I have in my hand? <laughs> and when he clicks to the next one. I want you to tell me what you see in that and think how blessed we are. I think there's a few of us in here, some a little bit more than others, who probably remember when this was not even invented. Exactly. What did we have? We had catalogs. And then we may have moved to phone books for some people. <laughs> and I always used to wonder, and I'd say, how do you do that? And my wife was from Korea, she said, this is what you do. Do this, and it softens it up so well. So it's not so coarse. Yeah. And it's amazing. And I said, yeah, after a certain while, it does get soft. Right. Yep. yep. Well, anyway, what I was going to show you is, in the slide, I want you to notice the multiple types of toilet paper we have. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's amazing. You have one single roll. You've got the bulky rolls. You've got the gigantic rolls. You have those that are angels off. Uh -huh. You got those that are Scott. There you go. I mean, Scott. <laughs> Who's Scott? Right. Is that just for Scott's and Fiora? Is uh -huh. another one? And then you got ultra strong cotton nail. We are so blessed, are we not, to choose. Not only to have one choice or a couple, we have multiple. Uh -huh. So how do you go about, next one if you can. How do you go about noticing one particular brand or what you think is what you should be honoring of the purchase? What do you see here? Watch these up. There's flowers and bush. Flowers, a lot. So as this morning as I was gathering, I was trying to get the word down and I was really praying and hard. God can do something on my mind. This is our flower bed, so please forgive us because it's not the cleanest flower bed. 
but it's multiple flowers. And these flowers, I tell you, they have survived 108 or plus humidity heat index. I'm so shocked at how they've just grown from one flower to multiple. Next one, Rob. So what do you notice in this one? Concrete? There's a single flower. Ah, can you see? Good eyes. This is my front driveway. Next one. A different perspective. And I just was so moved. I said, this is so awesome. Next slide. It's beautiful one flower. Just one flower made a difference for me in the morning. That's amazing. It was blossoming. Wasn't there yesterday. But this morning it was. Right. And nobody planted it. So what do you see in the next one? A queen. 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 <laughs> of some okay. kind. A princess. Princess, queen, beautiful. Young. Next one. Can't see this one all that good, but is a map. Mm. This is the Empire of Persia, Medo Persia, Medo Persia. And what are some things you notice in that which you can barely see, unfortunately? But what do you know? I've got some some handouts and mm. they didn't print out as well, so I'm gonna try to get them to you next week because mm. we'll get more into the meat of it next week. It's massive. <laughs> What's that? I said it's massive. Massive. Yeah. <laughs> so does anybody know any history about this? Mm -hmm. I, I, I have some, but they're not as clear. I just had a few. So you're more than welcome to them and or do the best you can with them. Take some and do the others. Because the printer or the, uh, yeah, the printer didn't work out so well. But anyway, if you'll notice it goes basically from Greece uh -huh. all the way down to India. Okay. Curves back around from down from Greece to Egypt, <clears throat> etc. Now you can't see it, but in there is a town called Susa. Yep. And that's the capital. And why am I sharing that with you? Because what I want to do is share with you that there was a queen, one person, that stood out for God. And you and Esther. <laughs> and who do we know? Esther. 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 All right. Yeah, so as you know, some of you, we'll get into the story here in a second, but there was a lot of choices the king had. Similar to how we had choices of what? Toilet paper and milk today. Right. <laughs> Commodity items, but definitely a big need. And something that we always try to differentiate, whether it's fat content or the flavor, or whether it's the toilet paper softness or the size. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you're like me, but boy, I have to tell you, there are some differences in toilet paper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do we know about the story of Esther? Shout it out to me. What did you know? Don't be embarrassed. Don't be bashful. She was brought up in a time where even today some say that a woman has no place in ministering the word of God. Okay. When scripture distinctly tells us that there's neither man nor woman, Jew nor Gentile, but we're all children of God under the adoption of and she stands out in that, just like uh, the others. You know? And uh, it's a marvelous story. As a matter of fact, it's just overwhelming. Okay? It well, says it very overwhelming. Well, I agree. <coughs> there are so many lessons out of this one story of ten chapters. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. It just was overwhelming for me as I was beginning to prepare and say, what does God want for me to share with you today? Anything else? She was, she was a Jew. Okay. Of, of people who were, I, I don't want, I don't want to use the word necessarily oppressed, but they, they were not in charge. They were captives. Um, so she came from that those people, mm -hmm. um, uh, in a time where the Jews were not necessarily looked upon or respected uh, as something special. Matter of fact, they were looked at as, as less than. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> So. We have some things that are similar today in our society? Yes, mm -hmm. okay. absolutely. absolutely. What else do we know about Esther? Mm -hmm. She was gorgeous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah gorgeous. she was beautiful. Very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, what I want to focus on is really, and I, and I apologize for, for those of you that can read, this is what I will have for you next week. I'll give you a color one and, and we can get there with the map on the back. But if you look at that very first part, it says, for just such a time as this, mm -hmm. 
just such a time as this. This is my message that I want us to think about, pray about, and as we're reading this week, and I'm going to give you homework right now that I want you to book, read the book of Esther. <laughs> it won't take you that long, and it's actually like a little mini novel. Mm-hmm. It's got so much drama in it, it's got so much it probably can be put on as a soap opera today or some type of television <laughs> series. But I do want to say that this is the very interesting part that I wanted you to take away right up front is that she was one individual that did some miraculous things with our miraculous and wonderful God. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me read you some of the introduction notes that I have here just to kind of set the stage, and then we'll go ahead and get to some of the scripture. It says, During the 70 years the Jews suffered their Babylonian exile, God raised up several people to faithfully guide and direct his fallen people back to himself. Mm-hmm. Among these were Zerubbabel, Ezra, Nehemiah, and a young woman named Esther. Mm-hmm. The actions and examples of these four people were worthy to be included in the Hall of Faith, oh, excuse me, Hall of Faith of the Hebrews chapter 11. Yet none of them were, in fact, quite placed there. Around the world, we've, we've been set, seeing things set apart in these days. Mm-hmm. Yes. And we've been seeing some people in our times, and we can probably shout out a few, but just for, for time's sake, think about those that you know who are courageous. Right. Esther was a woman, a young woman, that stood for courage for her faith and for her, her nation and her, her people. She had a cousin named Mordecai. And we're going to learn a little bit about Mordecai, but they had some great principles that they followed. Mm-hmm. And they used their experiences to glorify God. Mm-hmm. So Esther, as you'll see in a second when we read, she had parents that passed away. And Mordecai was an older gentleman, almost probably to be the father, if not a, an older brother. He ended up adopting Esther. But he's her cousin. The book of Esther is unique. It reads much like a novel, as I told you earlier. It's a story of a gripping one person and how we see those persons. Unfortunately, some have wrongly concluded that Esther was just a piece of historical fiction, but yet archaeology does state and show that there are evidence that this was not just a fiction, but it was historical and very accurate. Mm -hmm. Esther is placed in the writing sections of the Hebrew Old Testament, and the events that it took place under the the reign of King Xerxes, or some say Ahasuerus, Mm which was like a pharaoh, and it was in the time of 486 to 487, uh, 65 B.C., and it also kind of coincides with the book of Ezra, Ezra, chapter yes. 6 and 7. Now, let's go ahead and close with you that have your blood hole. Let's see if we can go into Esther. And we have a few of them up here. Do I need one? Mm-hmm. Are we back one? No chapter. We're going to start with chapter 1. Amen. I think it sets the stage pretty well. We're not going to go through everything. That's why I'm going to have you read it. I'm going to have you read it on your own. Okay. Thank you, John. share. we got plenty of them up here. <laughs> So what I do, and, and forgive me, but I'm kind of old-fashioned, <laughs> and I teach the, uh, the youth, and I'm always big on them learning and respecting the Word of God. Amen. And so what we do in our classroom is when we read the Word of God, we stand up. <laughs> so I would ask if there's anybody who would like to stand up and read a few, chap- a, a few verses for me, <laughs> I'd appreciate maybe the first nine. That would be great. Since this is a Sunday school, it's not meant to be a, a church or a pastoral service. <laughs> Somebody wants to Yeah, it's at the first nine. To, okay, go ahead. Yes, please, loud. This is what happened during the time of Xerxes. The Xerxes who ruled 127 provinces, stretching from, from India to Kush. At that time, King Xerxes reigned from the royal throne in the citadel of Susa. And in the third year of his reign, he gave a banquet for all his nobles and officials. 
the military leaders of Persia and Media, the princes and the nobles of the provinces were present. For a full 180 days, he displayed the vast wealth of his kingdom and the splendor and glory of his majesty. When these days were over, the king gave a banquet lasting seven days in the enclosed garden of the king's palace for all the people from the least to the greatest who were in the citadel of Susa. The garden had hangings of white and blue linen, fastened with cords of white linen and purple material to silver rings on marble pillars. There were couches of gold and silver on a mosaic pavement of porphyry, marble, mother of pearl, and other costly stones. Wine was served in goblets of gold, each one different from the other, and the royal wine was abundant in keeping with the king's liberty, liberality. By the king's commandment, each guest was allowed to drink with no restrictions, for the king instructed all the wine stewards to serve each man what he wished. Queen Vashti also gave the banquet for the women in the royal palace of King Xerxes. Okay. So we get a picture here of what? The Pretty low class. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> it's very <laughs> elegant. <laughs> so it kind of goes along with what we were seeing earlier when I showed you with all the milk and toilet paper. They had vastnesses of wealth and, mm -hmm. and luxuries and probably not saying they had toilet paper, but I'm sure they may have <laughs> had special people that might have helped them with that. Right. Anyway. Like a picture of the marriage piece. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. And so I got a picture of this is what I kind of conjured up, and you can see up behind me what, what uh, Queen Esther's looking like. So we're not talking about her yet, but we talked about Queen Vashti. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what happened to Queen Vashti. Sir, we wrong. Would you mind reading the next one? 11 through 11. Uh, if you could just go ahead and finish it out, that'd be great. Okay. I really want to set the stage here today. Yes. That's the purpose. Okay. To, to uh, bring... Vashti, the queen before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the princesses her beauty. For she was far to look on, I mean fair to look on, but the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by the chamberlains, and therefore the king was angry, and his anger burned in him. Verse 13. Then the king said to the wise men who knew the, the times, for, though, for so was the, the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment. And the next to him were the were Karshina, uh, Shetar, Admaza, Tarshish, Meris, Marsena, and Memucan, the seven princes of Persia and the media, and who saw the king's face and sat upon, uh, sat first in the kingdom. What shall we do to the queen? Vashti, according to the law, because she has not performed bidding of the king Asherah by the chamberlains. Verse 16, and the Memekan answered before the king and his princesses, Vashti the queen has not done wrong to the king only, but also to the princesses and to all the peoples that are in the provinces of the king Asherah. For this, this deed of the queen shall come abroad to all the women to make their husbands contemptible in their eyes. When it shall be reported that the king Asherah commanded to be brought to the Basti, the queen, before him, but she came not. And this day will the princesses of Persia and Media who have heard of the deed of the queen say the light of all the king's princesses so will there arise much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, let there go forth the royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, that it be not altered, that Vashti come no more before the king, Asherah, and let the king give her royal estate to another that is better than she. Verse 20, and when? The king's decree, which she shall make, shall which she shall make, shall be published throughout his kingdom, for it is great 
All the wives will give their husbands honor, both great and small. And the saying pleased the king and the princesses. And the king did according to the word of Mimicon. For he sent letters unto all the king's provinces, unto every province according to the writing there, and to every people after their language, that every man should be master in his own house and should speak according to the language of his people. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Ron. I tell you, it's not easy to get through some of those names, right? Mm -hmm. You all go through that struggle, so I appreciate it. Yeah. <clears throat> So this is a time when the king was getting ready. He's a little bit proud. He's getting ready to stage some war against the Greek. Um, and he wanted to have celebration. He wanted to show everybody where he was at and, and bring all the leaders in. And then he wanted to have his queen next to him, but she refused to do some of the things that he had wanted her to do. There are some commentaries that state that it was not appropriate and it was very embarrassing and she'd had enough. But you know when you didn't follow the king, that she potentially could be what? Executed. Oh, yeah. executed. That's right. So if you go back to that last verse, it says, and this is one of the things that we want to take out of this one, it says, he sent letters to all parts of the empire, to each province in their own language, proclaiming that every man should be the ruler of his own home. Mm -hmm. So Amen. you were right on target earlier when you mentioned about how the mm -hmm. women uh, word. This just even furthers that, yes. that commandment at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, it, so one of the things that we see that not necessarily stated directly here, but what are you beginning to feel mm -hmm. when you're reading that? We, we saw that there was, what, a lot of wealth? wealth <laughs> yeah. And then what happens? Challenged. Mm -hmm. Being challenged, absolutely. Yes. Being challenged mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. first time. Mm -hmm. At a time when you're trying to be victorious and power and mighty but yet you're being challenged without even really going out and doing anything right <clears throat> can you and see? it comes from with his own household amen <laughs> that's right can you see god working here mm -hmm. how he's setting the stage yeah mm -hmm. big time i mean and this is what i really want to is if you remember i said it's just such a time as this is really the takeaway a lot of times we have difficulties in our lives we think that life should be wealth and should be very something we should all partake in. Mm -hmm. Just as easy as going to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. But we don't see exactly what's going on. He didn't see that coming, I'm sure. You think so? No. Mm -hmm. He absolutely was preparing to show off everything he had. Yeah. And here we go. And that's an awesome point, too. Uh, he was prepared, uh, and they did know him. And historians record that Vashti was a beautiful woman as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he actually wanted to parade her around like yes. uh, in the book. Mm -hmm. And she didn't want to have any part of that. So, yes, it was God's plan, but to Vashti's credit, mm -hmm. she wasn't going to appear naked and dance in front of all of this uh, group uh, just to pump up the king's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ego. Yeah, so, yeah. She, but there was a price to pay, absolutely. Yeah. And she probably was thinking, why not one of the other 486 if I mean? Yeah, okay. exactly. exactly. Because she probably was the most beautiful. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like she has some dignity. It was. Right. Good morning, Mr. Carlos. <laughs> Good to see you. All right, well, let's go on to chapter two, unless there's something else that somebody has, God has led you as we're talking about this on your heart that you mm -hmm. want to share. Well, you know, there's always a spiritual uh, manner uh, in these things as you're going and you're doing an excellent job, by the way. Um, we see a picture of Vashti as the harlot, in a sense, and we see Queen Esther being fixing to be brought up as the true bride. And uh, we'll go ahead. Brother. No, you're good. You're good. Yes, ma'am. I, I just got a comment, you know, me being me and I am about me. You know, uh, mm -hmm. how much of this was male ego? How much pride was stamped in this forehead? We don't have any of that. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I would have to be asking, and I'd be searching real hard for mm -hmm. the scripture to find out. Because, you know, I, I have to agree with her. I'd be so 
somewhere else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. in all that mess. Yeah. You know, and, that's just my thinking. And she probably had enough. You know, she mm -hmm. she probably either been there maybe before. We don't know. The Bible doesn't say, but maybe right. even close to right. it. And she's like, I'm done. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. life's really not I'm worth it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So we know what the king is like, right? Mm -hmm. We know the situation. We know the wealth. So all right, let's go to chapter 2. The translators of Esther were often pretty Gentile when they were dealing with events in this chapter. But it didn't take them much reading to know in between the lines what was going on. It estimates how many women were taken from their families to satisfy the king's perverse lust. That's right as she mentioned. Exactly. It ranged from 400, they think, to about 1,500. I mean, I can't even imagine how many days are, there are in a year. Just multiply that out. I mean, mm -hmm. he's really, he is a, a person, like you said, his pride and what's happening. Yeah. It's the saddest of how all these young women were misused just the rest of their lives. Some of them wouldn't even just stay in widowhood, right. even as a young lady. Mm -hmm. Each would one would want to come back to see the king, but only if he was to delight him. We cannot ever over remind ourselves of how dangerous and enslaving and destructive sexual sin is. Mm -hmm. Whether it's real sexual encounters or other similar things, sexual sins can definitely ultimately destroy lives, not only our own, but those around us. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe that this is setting the stage in, in, in chapter two that this is not pleasing to God. Right. Okay, so now we know he's not the King is not very happy. Does anybody want to read just a couple more verses here? <laughs> the yeah, I'll read okay. okay. the this, this, uh, If you don't mind reading the first uh, five verses, that would be good. And after these things, when the wrath of King Xerxes was appeased, he remembered Vashti and, and what she had done and what was decreed against her. Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, Let there be fair young virgins brought for the king. And let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom, that they may gather together all the fair young virgins unto Shushan, the palace, to the house of the woman, unto the custody of Haiti, the king's chamberlain, keeper of the women. And let their things for purification be given to them. And let the maiden which pleaseth the king be queen instead of Vashti. Mm -hmm. And the king pleased the king, and he did so. Now in Shushan, the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, mm -hmm. the king of Jer, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamin. All right. Mm -hmm. Now we introduce okay. Mordecai. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, Mordecai. Is Mordecai related to this guy? Like to, who? to the king. Is Mordecai related to the king? No. No, no not at all. No. He's a Jew. He's a Jew. So right. how did he get there? God put him there. <laughs> 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 well, as you know, the Jews were, were exiled into Babylon. So yes. they, had to have, they were their own race, and they had to have their leaders. And we don't know much but what I could find, and maybe Pastor or anybody else mm -hmm. could tell me if otherwise, but they had to have their own leaders, and he was a government official mm -hmm. who acted on behalf of the Jews that was interceding with, mm -hmm. with the, uh, the Persians. Absolutely. So anyway, so he gets called into this. What else do we know about Mordecai? He was a pious man. He loved the Lord with all his being. Mm -hmm. He believed in prophecy. And he knew who Esther was going to be. He's Esther's uncle. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's go to this real quick and see if you can read your, your thing here. I've got some profiles here. Mm -hmm. The first one there is Mordecai. It says he's a Jewish official. Mm -hmm. It was Esther's older cousin. He became the second mm -hmm. king of Xerxes in the murder Medo-Persian Empire. Some of his strengths were that he honored and recognized God as his almighty and refused to bow to anyone. We'll learn about that. His lessons that we take from his life are that the rewards of doing the right thing for God's work are sometimes delayed, mm -hmm. but they are always guaranteed by God. Right. Anybody <coughs> have an example of that that we'll like to share? Of how maybe you've done something to honor God, that you've been doing the right thing, and that you just know it's the right thing, but sometimes you like to feel, because we're human, that you have done the right thing and other people didn't notice. Mm -hmm. But then 
all of a sudden one day something good happens to you and you know only that that's a God thing that God knows mm -hmm. and he's rewarded you it's such a refreshing feeling mm -hmm. does anybody have an example of that feeling well contrary to what people I do ministry work on the street and uh, one thing that they uh, a lot of others ask me that uh, believers and unbelievers alike is where is your church? Where is your following? Where is, what, what do you have to show for it? And I, I share with them Matthew 18, 24, two or three gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. You see, it's not about a building or a denomination or a religion, but a relationship with God and his beloved son, Jesus Christ. And so, I go out, and I don't do it for gain or popularity or anything like that. I just like being part of saving souls and seeing the reward of changed lives. And a lot of times when I do these things, nobody knows but me and God. And to me, that's honorable because it's humility before honor. Thank you, so I'm going to read on here and just keep going and seeing what we've got here with, with Esther. It says, his family, which is Mordecai, verse 6 of chapter 2, had been exiled from Jerusalem to Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar, along with King Joachim of Judah and many others. This man had a beautiful and lovely young cousin named Hadashah, which who was also called Esther. When her father and mother had died, Mordecai had adopted her into his family and raised her with his very own daughter. As a result of the king's decree, Esther, along with many other young women, were brought out to the king's harem in the fortress of Susa and placed in Haggai's care. Haggai was very impressed with Esther and treated her kindly. He quickly ordered a special menu for her and provided her with beautiful treatments. He also assigned her many several maids to make sure that she was chosen for the right palace and moved her for the maids into the best place of the harem. So Esther had not only told anyone of her nationality and her family background, but Mordecai had told her not to. Every day Mordecai would take a walk near the courtyard of the harem and ask about Esther to find out what was happening to her. Why do you think he didn't want to reveal that? Because it probably would reflect ne negative on her. Uh, it's kind of like some people don't want to tell you their history or their background or where they came from or or because they think people are going to look at them different. And uh, he didn't want anyone to to not like her or to favor her simply because she was a Jew. So kind of like that uh, you're wearing West Virginia today. We don't yeah. want to favor, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. As I'm me. not sure it was the referee because somebody's got to be for the referees. Yes, right. sir. And, go ahead. Okay. And it's just like it's written in the scriptures. And it says that a prophet is never honored in his own country. Yeah. You know, Yeshua Moshiach, Jesus Christ, went through that. And it was terrible because he was the creator. And his own people didn't even recognize and he went through so much. So as a family member, he ha you have to admit, he's probably a little bit worried. Yep. You know what's going to take place. Yep. He gets as close as he can without intruding, because I'm sure they were pretty protective of all these ladies, mm -hmm. especially if they were virgin. They didn't want any man to defile them before the king, mm -hmm. uh, etc. So what we're setting the stage is, and I'm, we'll get through it, and next week we'll go a little bit. I definitely want to have some time for prayer. Because I'm very banned on prayer and I believe in it and the power. Amen. But I want you to go, and if you can, to read Esther, the rest of the book. There's only a couple more chapters, a few more chapters, I should say. But you're gonna, I'm going to challenge you right now to look for a couple of things. Look to see how God is setting the stage. Mm -hmm. Look to see how the difficulties actually are his part of his plan. Mm -hmm. Look to see the different characters. There's three of them that I mentioned, with Esther, Mordecai, and Haman. And as we go and start talking about them, look at it in a way that maybe you've never looked at it before, and that is about this abundance. Did they really have the abundance, even mm -hmm. though they were exiles? 
That may have been part of God's plan. Mm -hmm. And so we'll get there next week. Amen. Anything else that people want to, anybody want to share? Mm -hmm. okay. All right. I will take down some notes. We're going to pray fervently. We're going to pray with